What's going on guys? So here in this box is a refurbished Nintendo 2DS that I brought from GameStop. And in this video, we're gonna be unboxing it, kind of taking a look at the condition, uh, testing out the console, testing some games, testing the menus, making sure everything works. And yeah, just kind of seeing what it's like to get a 2DS from GameStop in 2021. So before we unbox this thing, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below if you're not already subscribed. And also hit that join button as well if you wanna support the channel monetarily. And if you join level three or above, you'll actually get your names put in the video like below. Uh, so go ahead and do that if you so desire. And yeah, let's go ahead and unbox this thing. So like I said, refurbished 2DS from GameStop. I paid about $85 for it, including shipping and handling and all that good stuff, which is not a bad price. I, I checked eBay and that's about what they go for, uh, which is wild because just a couple of years ago, you could buy a 2DS from anywhere for brand new for about a hundred bucks and it also came with Mario Kart. So here inside the box, they got a lot of packaging, which is good because GameStop does not always do that well. A lot of times they'll just throw stuff in the box without much packaging and you know, things get banged around. And now before we pull the box out, let's look at this packing slip real quick. So as you can see, 2DS system blue, uh, says RE for refurbished, 75 bucks plus tax, tax and handling comes out to 85.79. So like I said, not a terrible price about what they're going for nowadays. And yeah, let's go ahead and get all this packaging out and see what's inside. All right, so at the bottom of the box, I found another one of these weird things from GameStop. I saw this last week when I unboxed another console. They take these sealed air things and they pop them and kind of just stuff them in there as, as packaging, basically, basically creating bubble wrap with stuff that is not bubble wrap. It's pretty interesting. I don't know why they do it, but I mean, maybe the only thing they have to pack with is these things and they don't have any bubble wrap. But that's my only guess. Um, but here's the console. It's in a plain white box, which is interesting because usually, usually these things come in like a, uh, a colorful box that says refurbished um, or something like that. But this one is just a plain white box, which is not great for the background because I have a, a white table here. And Pretty much the only identification we have on this thing is right here in the back where it says our serial number made in china and then it says 2ds system blue recharged so uh, you know I, I think gamestop used to call their refurbished consoles recharged so this thing has probably been sitting in the warehouse for a while or maybe they still call their handheld consoles recharged i'm, I'm not 100 percent sure but either way it should be the same thing so let's go ahead and open this thing up and see what we got inside gotta open it this way i believe what's going on here all right so i got it out it was uh for some reason it was kind of stuck on the edges and that's probably because this thing was sliding around so if you've seen gamestop's refurbished consoles or their handheld refurbished consoles they use this like plastic shrink shrink wrap type of thing to uh, hold it in there but it doesn't look like it did the job <laughs> this time and man i can't get this thing out what is going on here all right so i finally got the console out and then i think there should be a charger below it if we can get below it. All right, yes, yeah, so this is the thing that was supposed to be holding the console in place. Uh, basically, you put the console under this like plastic wrap and then pull the sides down and it holds it in place. But I think the plastic wrap was not loose enough to actually fit the 2DS under it. So it kind of messed up the shipping. But underneath that, we got a couple things. We have our charger. And then we also have a little note here that says your premium refurbished handheld unit may need a new screen calibration prior to play. I think I got that in the box the last handheld console I bought. Um, but it looks like some dirt came out of that console. And if we look at the screen right here, see if we can zoom in on this thing. It's got some debris on it. I don't know if that's how it came or if the, because it wasn't held down in the box very well, it slid around and banged up the box and got all this stuff on it. I'm not really sure what's going on here, but I think I can just wipe it off. So let me try that real quick. All right, so I wiped off the screen and it got most of it off, but to be honest, I think there's some debris stuck under the screen and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get it on camera, but actually you might be able to see it right there. There's like a little white speck right there. That is not on top of the screen. That is like underneath the top portion and it's on the actual screen beneath it. I don't know if you guys can really see that very well. And I think there's other couple of specks in there that are similar to that. So that's, uh, that's kind of disappointing. Um, I, I don't know if GameStop actually replaced this top part and that's why, you know, when they, when they replaced it, you got some stuff underneath it. And then now you have debris stuck under your console. So that's kind of disappointing. And let's go ahead and take a look, look at this console just kind of all around. So as I showed you on the front already, um, the screens are not bad other than the fact that this top one has some stuff stuck under it. The bottom touch screen actually looks like it has no, no scratches at all. I'm trying to show it in the light so you guys can see if there are any scratches, but I don't see any. And then here on the top, you got your power button, your start and select, your Y, X, A, B. Uh, your d-pad and then your analog stick the analog stick 
to be honest, seems a little bit loose. You can kind of see the give that it has with my, my hands. I know just in general, usually analog sticks are a little bit loose, but this one seems excessive, at least more than usual. Um, but uh, I don't know, I guess it still works, hopefully. We've got a camera up here. We got a uh, speaker, microphone. I think that's just a light right there. The lights up when you turn the console on. And then here on the bottom of the console, I'm hoping my camera stays focused on it, but you have your headphone jack here and then you have your, I'm not sure what that is right there. It's a slider for, oh, sleep. So that's how you make your console sleep. I guess kind of like a rest mode. And then here on the right side, again, I'm not sure if my camera will focus very well, but you got your SD card slot right here, which slides open pretty easily. Got a stylus right here, just like every Nintendo DS ever. And then on the top here, you got a few things. You got your right trigger, your left trigger, which both appear to work. You got your AC adapter plug-in spot. And then most importantly, you got the spot where you put in your games. And then on the other side, you got your volume rocker, which seems to work. And then on the back, of course, we got just call all, kind of all of our standard info, like our uh, manufactured date and stuff like that. Um, actually, I don't think this shows the manufactured date, but it shows a bunch of other random stuff you don't care about, as well as serial number. It looks to be overall in good condition. You got your two cameras here as well. I did see some dings on the top. Let me see if I can check those out somehow. So yeah, if you look real closely right here, you can see a couple of dings right there, a couple more along the top, one right there, but that's really not too bad considering this is a used console. So you're gonna expect some imperfections. And down here on the bottom right hand corner also you got like a little bit of something. Not too bad though, all things considered. Another thing there. Those are the those are the bad spots though. You know the corner spots are where you're always gonna get damage at. So not too bad, all things considered. You know we haven't turned it on yet to test it out, but um, from a cosmetic standpoint it's not too bad. The only thing I'm really concerned about is it has that spec or a few specs under the main glass here, which is kind of annoying. It might not be too big of an issue once the console is on and the screen is on. Um, let's go ahead and turn this thing on and see about that. So it looks like it does have some charge. So I press the power button and it turned blue. Now hopefully it, oh there it goes. All right, so English, sure. Initial settings, if you are a child, please have a parent or guardian do this, okay. So yeah, basically if you guys don't know what a 2DS is, it's basically the exact same thing as a 3DS except it only does 2D and not 3D. Pretty self-explanatory to be honest. So let's go ahead and put in our dates. I'll just leave it at 1, 1, 21, 10 o'clock, sure. Date and time been saved. Enter a nickname. Uh, we'll call it, okay. I tried, tried to type a J, but I got the, the U. Yeah, I don't know what that means, but. Maybe I should get the stylus out to test that thing out. Nice. Call my birthday that day. All right, so I made this mistake last time I bought a, a Nintendo console. I pressed the first country just because I was trying to get through it fast and it messed me up later on. So let's go ahead and scroll down to United States. Um, I don't need a state. Profile has been saved. All right, cool. So far, so good. Let's see if the volume works on this thing. Yeah, we got some volume. Got some nice menu music now. Don't want to do it too loud just in case there's some <laughs> copyrighted music in the background. Set up an internet connection. Yeah, I guess I'll go ahead and set up the internet connection just in case I need it. All right, so I'm connected to the internet now. Next step is parental controls. I'm gonna go ahead and not set that up because I don't need it. And let's see what's next. That's it, your system's set up, but before I go, can I tell you a little bit more about the TDS system? I guess I'll pass on that for now. <laughs> There's our home button. Home button feels a little bit sticky, that's weird. It works though, I guess that's the good thing. So far, so good, got some scratches, got some dings. Um, got the little speck under the glass, but we're about to see if it really affects anything. And yeah, actually I can see that spec under the glass while the console is on. I, don't, I highly doubt you guys can see it on the camera right now, but I can still see it. Kind of annoying. So it's telling me about the theme shop right now. Ah, we can change. Oh, I need an SD card to put a theme in. I'll pass on that for now. All right, so we're all booted up now. And as you can see, you got the menu here. It's pretty much just like every other 2DS or 3DS menu. You got your health and safety information, your spot where your game slot will go, or your game your game card will go. 
Um, you got your camera, your sound, your Me Maker, your Me Plaza, the eShop, AR Games, Face Raiders, Activity Log, a Nintendo Zone Viewer, which I'm actually not sure what that is. You also got Download Play, which I see on here every time, but I'm always reminded of it when I see it here. That it was such a cool feature. I haven't used it in forever, but it's it's a cool feature. Now, one thing I want to try real quick is, I think that was the wrong button. I just want to turn off the brightness because it's a little bit too dim right now. But the funny thing is it's probably on its brightest setting, but we're going to see it in a second. Yeah, so it's already on the brightest screen possible, which is actually not too bright. So that's kind of concerning, but I'm not too surprised. It's old technology. Um, nothing special here. Oh, you can actually do Amiibos on the 2DS. I forgot about that. I actually have my own 2DS that I bought like years ago. I bought it brand new for like 100 bucks. came with Mario Kart. So this is only like 15 bucks less than it doesn't come with Mario Kart. Um, and yeah, let's just kind of check out things. Your game notes, friend list, notifications, internet browser. Let's check out the Me Shop or the, the eShop just to make sure our internet works. All right, so it's telling me I need to put an SD card in to download anything, but I think I can still browse the shop without putting an SD card in. All right, so it's still giving me a bunch of warnings and stuff. I'll pass on that. So here we go. We are on the, the Wii Shop. Or the, why did I call it the Wii Shop? The eShop. So we got Kirby's Epic Yarn. There's actually a demo available. Cool. It's crazy to me. Mario Kart 7 is still $30. This game came out how long ago? Probably, what was it? 15 years ago? It had to be like 2005, 2006 that game came out. That's wild. That is still $30. Animal Crossing New Leaf. Hey, so I actually have Animal Crossing New Leaf with me. So here's my Animal Crossing New Leaf. The funny thing is, this is actually the only 3DS game I have. <laughs> Everything else I have is just... A regular DS game um, or download it on the console. Smash Bros, Luigi's Mansion. Yeah. So many good games. I mean, to be honest, I, I prefer the 2DS over the 3DS just because the 3D kind of hurts my eyes after like five minutes. So um, I'm a big fan of the 2DS. Like I said, I have my own personal 2DS that I bought a few years ago. I'm actually kind of interested in getting a 2DS XL. But yeah, let's go ahead and try to test out a game. So, like I said, I have Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing New Leaf for the 3DS. I really didn't play with my 3DS that much, or my, excuse me, my 2DS. This is actually the, literally the only thing I played, plus some Mario Kart 7 because it came with it for free as a downloadable code. Um, but yeah, it loaded up like instantly, so that's nice. Update is available. I think, oh, this is the same issue I ran into. I bought an original, original 3DS from GameStop, played it, Try to play this game, try to update it, and then it wouldn't update because there's no SD card, which is what it's saying right now. So let me go ahead and get an SD card, and we'll go ahead and plug this thing in and see if we can get this game to load up. All right, so it's time to test out the SD card slot. Got over on the side. Got my SD card. And voila. It's creating a home menu on my SD card, and... Let's go ahead and try to update this thing again, and hopefully it works this time. All right, so it is updating. Uh, hopefully it doesn't take too long, but if I remember correctly, this update actually takes like 10 or 15 minutes, which is, which is kind of wild because these games are not very large. I can't imagine it takes too long to download. But you know, it is what it is. I'll come back once it's done. All right, guys, so I finally finished downloading it. I didn't count exactly, but it took like 15 or 20 minutes probably to download this thing, which is kind of wild considering it's a... It's a 3DS game. I can't imagine it's that large, and I can't imagine the update is very large, but, you know, like I said, it is what it is. Let's go ahead and boot it up now and make sure it actually works. And I always forget the uh, extra data cannot be found, so spot pass is currently unusable. Uh, I'm not sure what that means, but um, I always forget that on the DS, it actually stores the, the game data in the cartridge. So I should have... Yeah, have my old... My old save file. Dude, it's been so long since I've played this game. Like, it's probably been at least two or three years. I can't imagine how much stuff is in my, in my mailbox. Oh, actually not too much stuff. I thought it'd be a lot more. It's snowy here though. Oh, what the heck? <laughs> I fell into a hole. I have the Animal Crossing for the Switch, but I haven't played it in months either. I kind of got out of the habit and just haven't played it. Um, but yeah, it looks like the game is working. The other thing we can try is trying a regular 2DS game, or not a 2DS game, sorry, I meant a regular DS game. So I actually have Zoo Tycoon 2 for the Nintendo DS, and let's go ahead and test this out and make sure it works. 
You know what I need to buy? I need to buy like the original Nintendo DS. Not not the lights, not a 2DS, not a 3DS. I need to buy the original DS. You know, the one, I think the original DS did not have a backlit screen, which is kind of crazy to think about. Um, 2008, it's still a, such an old game. I mean, I'm calling it old 13 years, but there's so many games that are extremely old compared to this. Like if you play the, you know, the NES, that's in the 80s. It's like 40 years old now. Kind of crazy to think about. But yeah, I mean, it looks like this is working. I don't know if there's a save file here or not. It probably is, but let's go back just to the main menu. I mean, there's a lot of other stuff we could test. Like, the, I guess we could test the camera real quick. Make sure it actually works. I mean, the, the, the 3DS camera is such low quality that uh, I don't know why you would ever use it. At least from what, what I recall, it's like extremely low quality. Dude, it makes an extremely loud noise when it takes a picture. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I basically took a picture of the Animal Crossing cartridge. So it looks like the camera is working, so that's good. Uh, so we've tested out the internet, the camera, um, a, a 3DS game, we tested out a regular DS game. They all seem to work. I would like to make a Mii, but I've made so many Mii's in the past, I don't need to make one right now. Um, but yeah, I mean, looks like it's working. Uh, my, I guess my main concern, like I said earlier, is that there is some some debris or something under the top gra glass screen, on the top screen, which is a little annoying. It's not terrible because you can't really tell too much as long as it's the right colors. Now, right now, I've got a, as you can see, it's a black background, and I can pretty easily see the white speck under there. Um, again, I don't think you guys can really see it. The other thing that's kind of weird is the analog stick has a little bit more give to it than I would expect, usually. Um, but it's not terrible. All right, guys, so thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like down below, and also subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want to support the channel monetarily, go ahead and hit that join button down below. And if you join level three or above, you'll actually get your name put in the videos um, while you're a member. Uh, so go ahead and do that if you want to. And yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and have a great day.